to the main chunk of the story today the main chunk of the story today is the issue with mr andrew callaghan as most of you guys would know many many women have popped out from the woodwork and have basically um, accused andrew callaghan of um, channel 5 fame of being a little bit of a creepo right being somebody that maybe doesn't know how to act when he's around the ladies and now he's been cancelled to the point where, you know, he's put himself into a psych ward, which is funny, isn't it? I think. Because whenever these guys get accused of being creeps or diddling, like Chris D'Elia, oh, I'm a sex addict, I need to go to rehab. This one. Oh, um, you know, I don't know when to, I don't know, I don't know when no means no. Now suddenly I'm a, I need psychiatric help. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> they don't even have the balls and the decency to stand in their creepness and their horribleness. They always have to make an excuse right mental health issues oh i was abused too when i was coming up yeah right get out of here but anyway whatever here we go so allegations against him let me see if i can pop them up here but blah, 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 blah. so this is the first allegation is so the first article i remember seeing was courtesy of the rolling stone the rolling stone seems to have a real hard on for taking him down by the way whoever's writing for them or whatever i think andrew needs to maybe you know reach out to somebody over there because whoever works there definitely doesn't like him because I think they've written quite a few pieces basically detailing what's been going on and making it clear that they're going to do their bestest to dump him and to flip him, bury him under a bridge. Headline reads as follows. Andrew Callaghan, popular host of All Gas No Breaks and Channel 5 accused of sexual misconduct. Um, on his YouTube channel, Channel 5, and his recent HBO show documentary, This Rules His Rules, a 25-year-old. He's 25 years old. Holy shit, brother. His face looks like he's lived 100,000 years, isn't it? Is that stress? Is that just acne? Like, wild one. He looks way older than 25. Fuck me. Um, has a mass of millions of fans as a goofy, deadpan, inter, uh, interlocutor, interlocutor. How do you spell that? How do you say that? Interlocutor. Um, highlighting the absurdities of modern culture. His straight face interviews with fringe members of the contemporary society. Okay, let's get to the accusations. Just go away. Caroline Else, a TikToker who goes by the handle Cornbread Ass Roll. Okay. Posted a video last week recounting her alleged experience with Callahan. In her video, she alleges Callahan um, asked to stay at her place after having a falling out with one of his crew members. Oh, big red flag there, isn't it, mate? Anyone asking you to stay over your house because they had an argument with somebody? Yeah. Uh, anyway, though she said um, she told him that she was not interested in sleeping with him, she nonetheless eventually got my consent because he wore me down. Yo, I've just got to be honest most guys <laughs> don't even get to this point i don't even understand honestly the guys who even get to this point is another level if you have to get to a point where you're having to wear somebody down to get sex that's super weird right the fact that you have to get to this level in the first place most people don't get this most people just get a fuck you you get a door in your face you get a block button you get kicking the nuts you get punched in the face you might get spat on but to get to a point where you're convincing somebody and you wear them down you gotta look yourself in the mirror the next day you have to look yourself in the mirror that you wore somebody down to get sex that is wild how is that even a win how can you even be proud of that <laughs> like like you had to like get into the point of exhaustion before you just said okay take me it's like yowzers anyway she said in the video i said what um i said whatever because i was trying to get the whole thing over with it doesn't discount that i told him no he was still found a way to coerce me into doing something i didn't want to do yeah there's probably agency on both sides in this thing there's probably personal responsibility on her end you know no one should be wearing you down to get sex in any way shape or form it's not like somebody wearing you down to to get some money right you want to borrow a fiver and no you want to lend somebody to give it to you fair enough but you know you should be holding your your um, private parts to a probably higher level than a couple of dollars and maybe no one should be able to wear you down under any circumstances but also being a guy and really trying to wear somebody down is mad in my opinion i think so personally for me part of the reason why you want to hook up with somebody is that you want to hook up with somebody that want to hooks up with you i'd imagine right most guys you want to hook up with somebody that also wants to hook up with you it's also nice when maybe somebody turned you down before wants to hook up with you later down the line but also there has to be just a common you know there has to be like a two people has to be interested for it to actually make sense and for it to feel good oh my god wow you want me i want you bang we hook we hook it up get to the point where you're coercing convincing <laughs> somebody to get down just sounds so weird like it just it already sounds disgusting right they have the you're having to convince somebody like what are you saying to convince them as well think about the words you're saying please 
come on just this one time no one's gonna know like all these sort of words it's like that just sounds like a really bad r&b song no one's gonna know please i ain't gonna tell nobody close your eyes don't scream <laughs> like how far does that go <laughs> that's really really sus so i think for most guys out there it's probably a good piece of advice to if you're ever in a situation where you're trying to hook up with somebody and it gets to a point where you have to convince them to hook up with you maybe step away maybe back away maybe go home maybe turn on some porn hub or something and get that over and over and go to sleep but trying to convince somebody to hook up is really sus, in my opinion. Super sus. Anyway, it continues. In the video, LC said that she did not wish to come forward, only doing so after Callahan skyrocketed pop popularity. It's even more hard to come, sorry, to have to relive the trauma that I endured every single day by seeing this man as a social justice warrior and as somebody who cares about human rights as a platform. You shouldn't be supporting him. Okay. You know what's really funny about this, this comment? This funny about his comment, this is the same thing that the Crystalia accusers said. The same thing. I think one of the first Crystalia accusers, I think the first girl, she was some young girl. I forgot her, how old exactly that she was, but I think she was like under 21 or something. And I remember, I think her first account was that she was at home and she saw, I think, the ads for you. Or maybe you was coming on or something on Netflix. And it was kind of getting blasted everywhere on social media because obviously you was really popular at the time. And she got annoyed by seeing Chris's face all the time because you know, of what happened to her. And she decided to just randomly blurt out a flipping tweet and or something. And then that tweet went viral. And all of a sudden, Chris is getting cancelled and being accused of being a diddler. So that popularity basically was a blessing and a curse in a way because it obviously, of course, was a blessing because it was kind of his, his foot back into popular contemporary culture and also a curse because it eventually ended up kind of like being his downfall. But Jesus, Christos, Krimi. It continues. Another TikToker, da Dana, or Modely Freckle, posted her own series of videos on January 8th. Okay, I think I've got this one. This one's called Dana, right? Where is she? I think she's here somewhere. Is there, they got TikTok here? Okay, let's see if she got a TikTok. I want to actually see the video of her talking because it can give it a little bit more life as me trying to flip in, incorrectly read these flipping accounts. Let's see what she's saying here. ba 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 Modely Freckle is a DJ. Oh, no. Solidarity with the DJs out there. Part one, part two, part three, part four. Jesus, Christos. Okay, cool. We've got, let, let's play these clips and see what she's saying here. So, as I said in my last TikTok, um, I'm going to be talking about what happened between me and Andrew Callahan. Um, but I want to start off by saying that I wouldn't have been able to do this um, without... Caroline posting that TikTok first. Honestly, she gave me the opportunity to feel comfortable enough to actually show my face and talk to a bunch of strangers online about something very personal um, that's happened to me. Um, I had actually posted about it publicly. That has to be, I wonder, right? If you're, if you're a creep like that, that has to be the biggest nightmare of them all. Not that one person comes out, because I think in a if you're really demented, you can maybe excuse the one person and say, you know what, it was one bad day, um, wires were crossed, I didn't know this, I didn't know that. You can kind of feign ignorance. But when a number of people start coming out with stories, it really starts to paint you out to be one where even if reports aren't filed, even if you don't get arrested, whatever, if it's just like the court of public opinion, if more than two people come out saying you know similar things about you just being a horrible person to kind of interact with in a sexual way it can really look really mad on you so actually even though one person's bad enough coming out saying something it's still bad even if you get found innocent it's still terrible for reputation the fact that more than two people come out saying things is like god damn especially in the midst of you having the biggest moment in your career and stuff and that documentary just dropped Oof. no wonder you went to a psych ward there you go. About, um, you know, what happened between me and Andrew the day before Caroline posted her TikTok. Um, because I didn't really know where else to talk about it that would reach, you know, more people than just my close friends. I don't have a really big following on any social media. Um, I keep a lot of accounts private because of my professional life and 
Um, As a DJ. Huh? Yeah, but I just want to, you know, say thank you to Caroline first off. Uh, she was, you know, th there was positive, supportive comments on her post. And, you know, then someone took her post and posted on Reddit. And then everyone was having a heyday with it. Um, you know saying hurtful things and not believing her, which... Can I say something semi-controversial? If you bring these serious issues to social media and to the internet, you kind of have to be open to the idea of, to a notion that you're opening yourself up to the world and some people are going to say mean things and some people aren't going to believe you. You shouldn't really be saying these things because you want people to believe you. You should be saying them because you want to share what happened to you. And you, you just want it, be, you want it to be known. You want it to be put on record. Hey, this is my experience with this person. And you want some kind of uh, personal psychological release and relief from having to hold such a traumatic event to yourself and whatnot. And it's a weird kind of therapy to kind of, you know, deal with your trauma. But you shouldn't really be trying to share these stories, hoping people believe you. Because if you get into that game of trying to get people to believe you, you're going to be sitting there sharing the receipts, trying to prove your location. And it just gets into a whirlwind where you can never convince certain people because i'm sure there are certain andrew callaghan fans out there who are never going to believe these girls if they if you're a, if you're a big enough fan of channel five and all gas no breaks and him as, as a person i'm sure the same way they have made excuses for delia you're going to make excuses for, for andrew because you love the guy so hopefully these girls don't get into that mind kind of game of trying to convince the internet because you can never convince the internet if you want to deal with it in the court of law deal with it in the court of law if you want to just get your story out there so you're not holding it in get it out there but don't ever try to think you can convince people on the internet that you're telling the truth because they're never going to believe you and more more often than not people are probably going to try and goad you and trick you into trying to release more evidence and you know you're going to get found out and people are going to realize some holes in your stories and and, and it just turns into a whole issue so just share your story, get it out there and get it done. Close your laptop and keep it moving, but don't engage. I, if, if that was out, I would say. But hey, what do I know? It hurts. And I know that really hurt her. Um, and so I'm not going to let someone else go through this alone. Like if y'all want to should talk about somebody, you can do it about me. You can say mean shit to me. That's good of her. Uh, That's lovely. Really what a lovely lady. Have to say what a lovely I, lady. I'm just saying the truth right now. And uh, I don't care what you believe. But I want... Um, I want... You know, other women who he's affected to feel comfortable about talking about it. Um, I'm not saying they have to talk about it. But um, to realize that, you know, this isn't your fault. This isn't an isolated event. Um, this is a pattern that this guy has. And Okay, I want some details of her story. Uh, let's, let's, I want some actual, what's the details? Let's see part two. What's she saying? What actually happened? Now, the main thing is that, you know, people are like, where's the evidence? Where's the proof? Or maybe it's, maybe it's uh, this video here. Hold on. Let me see. There's, there should be a, I see a video just to show me that what happened. So, um, since I've commented on Caroline's TikTok or Cornbread Acerole's TikTok, um, I've noticed a lot of people have been viewing my profile, which makes sense because everyone's probably trying to figure out what's going on. Um, and, you know, it seems like people need more details, which I get, um, even though it's really hard, like I'm physically shaking right now. Um, also, what's this phrase that everyone keeps using about shaking? Is that an actual thing that people are doing or is that just something that's like a new speak, like period, and like saying um, uh, slay or something? What's the, what's, what's the, with the term shaking? Are people actually shaking or is that just a trendy thing to say? Because I think the first girl said the same, same thing. I'm literally shaking saying this. I'm shaking. Why is everyone shaking? I'm going to do it. I'm not going to let Caroline be dragged through the mud alone. I don't give a fuck what y'all have to say to me. Y'all are randoms on the internet. I'm a random on the internet. But just keep in mind, Andrew is also a random on the internet that you probably don't know. So I will be posting my story later once I can fully articulate what I want to say. So. Okay, I don't know. I, I, should, I just want to know what happened. Okay, maybe read the article. I want to show what happened. Let me just see. Let me see the article. So, um, okay, in one video, this is the lady, that one we saw, Moldy Frecky. 
In one video, she alleges that she had hooked up with Callahan once but found him mean and demanding and that he had creeped her out. When he reached out to her again, she alleges she declined to hook up with him, only for him to invite her to dinner so he could apologize for his behavior. At the dinner, oh my god. That's when you know you're a piece of shit. <laughs> you scare all the hoes away. Imagine, you scare all the hoes away, right? They give you another chance to make it right. And then you scare them again the second time. <laughs> oh my god this guy man holy shit when we reached out to her again she alleges she declined to hook up with him only for him to invite her out for dinner to apologize for his behavior at the dinner he allegedly repeatedly asked to have sex with her in the car though she said no she offered to drive him home though i did not want him to have sex with me ever again yeah oh by the way this is something as well that i found out that people are really interesting as well analysis out there of like the lack of understanding with these type of things do you guys remember? Actually, no, I don't remember. <clears throat> I'm seeing a lot of guys on the Channel 5 sub, I think they're dudes anyway, who don't understand how this could be harassment. Like, uh, was it uh, he allegedly repeatedly asked to have sex with her, even though she said no? People are saying, oh, that's not harassment. Maybe it's not like uh, our word, right? But that is a form of harassment. If somebody says no, it's like, a, forget sex. Let's put sex out of the way. If you just keep annoying somebody out in the street continually, you'd get, you'd get, a, you'd get flipping charge of harassment also, right? They just, this person once told you, told you to get away from them. They keep walking away. They keep, you know, making distance. They make it known vocally, verbal, where verbally, physically, they don't want anything to do with you. And you keep talking to them. That is a form of harassment. So if you are, continually trying to proposition somebody to sex and they keep saying no that is a form of harassment also so i don't understand why some people can't get that through their heads but i guess you know maybe because um it's being put in the same bracket as the other girl's uh, uh, accusation i'm not really too sure but that isn't the greatest thing ever you don't want that on your jacket you don't want people to go around saying that hey this guy keeps asking me to hook up all the time i keep saying no all the time and he keeps asking all the time that is also some creep shit Let's just put that out there in the blue. It continues. While in the car, Moldy Freckle alleges Callahan touched her inner thigh, kissed her neck, and attempted to put his hand down her pants. That's cr like that. That is that is that is like textbook full stop creep behavior. No, you imagine. Let's let's begin the beginning of the story. He hooked up with her beforehand, and she creeped. He creeped her out to the point where she wanted nothing to do with him whatsoever. He reaches out to her again. She doesn't want to have you to do with him. He convinced her to have dinner, to say sorry. So under the guise of everything's going to be okay, I'm going to apologize, I'll make amends, I know I did wrong. He goes and meets the lady and then tries to put it on her again, even though she says no. That to me is capital H harassment. But hey, what do I know? Um, it says here, I told him to stop. I told him to get off of me multiple times. Dudes who get off on this stuff is uh, are bizarre, man. Getting off on people saying no and still going, you are crazy. He tried to put my hand, uh, put his hand, oh, sorry, he tried to put my hand on his pants and I was fighting against him during this, telling him to please stop. She then claimed she told him repeatedly to leave her car, which she says he finally did, though he asked her if she could give him oral sex before. Oh my God. <laughs> Andrew, man. How horny are you, Giza? Oh my. Repeated attempts to get, get on it. And then before he leaves, could you quickly suck my dick? like how about no <laughs> how about leave my car how about jump off a bridge like what though she says they never spoke again after the incident in response to the comments requested receipts back in her claim up Moldy Fresco also shared screen records of dms she allegedly exchanged with callahan this is what i'm saying man don't get involved in the game of receipts because how can you prove this happened what you'd have to be recording the whole event like this is why you shouldn't get in my opinion i think so if you're going to pursue legal you know cases or whatnot and go police reports fair enough but don't get into the the, don't get into the comment game of trying to prove because you can't prove this happened really unless you're recording the whole thing on your phone and even then like you know like it's just i don't know like this is a dangerous game to play uh it continues um as the host of the popular youtube channel we'll got some breaks which you created da, da, da. okay there's two more allegations here okay I think it's a new, uh, okay, I think that's a new IRA article. Yes, I think this this is a new, this is the latest accusation, right? The latest one, I think is from this young lady here, who it goes by the name of Olive Yeah. Let's see what he did. Andrew Callahan, this is this lady. Jesus Christ, this guy. This really short and to the point. Um, I have an experience with Andrew Callahan 
that corroborates some of the other women's stories that are coming forward. It was 2020 in Los Angeles, and Andrew invited me to the bar, the Golden Gopher. Uh, I met up with him and some friends, and then afterwards we went to a house party. We were drinking the whole time, obviously. Um, he wanted to come back to my house afterwards, where I remember repeatedly telling him that I just wanted to be friends, that I didn't want to take it to that point anymore. Please don't tell me you're still invited him back to your house after saying this. Please don't tell me you did that, please. And he repeatedly asked me and pressured me into having sex or giving him a blowjob. Um, he pressured me to the point um, to where I did give in. Oh! <laughs> Honestly, what, what, I don't know where these, where do these, where, where does this world exist where this happens? In my life, I don't think there's any occasion in my entire life where asking somebody something like that more than two times doesn't get you to get the fuck off or to, I don't know, a middle finger or go tell you to fuck. Like, I don't understand what world people live in where you just keep asking and it happens. Like, what reality is this? Holy shit. Oh, God, mate. I just wanted to share that to help um, support some of the other victims that are coming forward. And this is the receipt. Here are the messages from them. Okay, holler if you want to party when I arrive. Where you at? And also, like, just as a as a sidebar, ish, I think, in my opinion, considering what this guy looks like, it's an absolute blessing from the gods that he has any female fans to begin with, right? And any female fans who would want to hang out with him in real life and any female fans who would legitimately maybe think about swapping saliva with him it's an absolute blessing from the gods that that happening because this guy is 25 allegedly 25 years old and he looks like he could be 40 easy right and he clearly he's not been blessed in the looks department in my opinion just you know just my opinion maybe some people might think he's cute for me you know a strong zero so the fact that he's even got girls that are into the stuff that he does should be a blessing in the, in itself. And then to go to the way of kind of abusing them and taking advantage of their flipping love and adoration of you as a fan is just like, oh, what are you doing, brother? What are you doing? What are you doing? But I'm also just shocked, legitimately shocked, that this constant pressure thing works for some people. That they can legitimately just keep asking for things like that and some people cave. It's wild to me legit wild that it, this even allegedly happens for, for the person giving in and for the person happy to receive it in the end yeah I, I finally got it i wore her down like what are you saying to your boys after are you saying yeah i wore her down man she, she she finally gave in i'm so happy it's like that sounds super sus but hey the screenshot says as follows holler if you want a party when arrive where you're at i'm down for a few beers can't go hammy so, you know, she's doing what most girls do, right? By not giving out signals that they're they're down to do anything else extra. I'm going to have a couple of beers, but I can't go crazy. So relax. Come to the Golden Gooper downtown. Okay, need a few. Do you know when I'm... I'll, I'll let you know when I'm ready. Call cool. phone going to die. I'm here, but you're invited, Golden Gooper. So he's getting very desperate here. Three messages in a row. Calling Uber. See you soon patio oh yeah 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 he seems to have a thing for nose though he seems to he seems to get off on the, on, on some nose the more nose he gets the more he seems to be a bit more interested in the situation which is super super sus um let's see the other there's more right what's another allegation i think that was that one i read okay this is a new one i think it's a new article uh ba, 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 ba. violated confusing incredibly disrespected another woman accused is carrying on sexual misconduct so this is another story so I think there might be like six stories, six people so far. <laughs> Yo, it's, it's a rap for you, bro. It's a fucking rap. Um, but that's the thing, though. It's not a rap for him career-wise because I'm sure he'll be fine. It's probably just a rap in terms of HBO and commercial shit. But in terms of his own Patreon, his YouTube, his fans will be fine of it. Do you know what I mean? His fans are already making excuses for him already on the sub. Um, some of them are arguing that it's not assault, it's not abuse, he did nothing wrong, blaming the girls. It's like, all right, cool, man. Um, it continues. It says here, when Charlotte was 18, she matched with a then 19-year-old man named Andrew Callahan. Yo, they're bringing up stories of him when he was 19. He's been doing this since 19 years of age, pre-fame. Because it would have made a bit more sense if this was like, you know, when you get a bit of fame 
and you're socially awkward or maybe you haven't had enough experience with girls and you just start doing mad, creepy, sus shit because you've got no experience and you're just at awkward and you think that's the right way to go about things and you watch too much Fresh and Fit. But he's been doing this since he was 19. This is showing patterns, in it? Or maybe the articles are establishing patterns. Who knows? Let's just read it anyway. Um, the 24-year-old who requested a pseudonym to protect her privacy was familiar with Callahan as they had attended neighboring high schools in Seattle area. Though Callahan would later become well-known as a host of the popular YouTube channel Gaso Breaks, um, at the time she knew him as a goofy, aspiring rapper um, known as Trek God. He used to rap. The view I had of him was like, ha look at this dude, she tells Rolling Stone. But in 2016, she agreed to go out with coffee for him with the two returned to an apartment he was staying at, she says, to drink wine and watch a movie. Fuck you. Now, mate. What happened um, next, she says, was abrupt shift in tone. Charlotte claims Callahan kissed her, then poured wine on her chest and licked it off. <laughs> oh. This happens when you watch too much Fresh and Fit. Honestly, what kind of move is that? What kind of move is that? Whoops. There's some wine on your chest. Why don't I lick that off? Yo, get me a bucket so I can vomit in it. Jesus Christ. There were acts that she said she consented to, even though she was somewhat uncomfortable. Have you... I don't even want to ask this question, man, but... Surely some people have been with people where you're going through the motions and you can see somebody clearly feeling uncomfortable. Have you ever not stopped before and just said, hey, are you okay? Like, it's not just a common courtesy. Like, hey, are you all right? Are you fine? Yeah, I'm all right. I'm okay. No, I'm not okay, actually. Yeah, and you just stop. Whatever. It's not a big deal. Shit happens, isn't it? People change their minds in a spell. It can be a, it can be horrible, blue balls and whatnot, and a mood shifter. But you know, just continually, I don't know, just making sure everyone's having a good time in the situation. But this pouring wine on chest thing is a fucking wild move. Like blossom heels on chest, like a box of wine. Like what is going on here? Um, I wasn't until Callahan grew more persistent, placing his hand on a crotch that Charlotte started saying no. <sighs> Again, another pattern. When they say no, he says go. Jesus Christos. He wasn't taking simple answer for a no, so a simple no for an answer, and consequently it turned into me trying to make it um, up an array of excuses as to why I didn't want to have sex. He kept insisting that I didn't need to get off of him and because I was giving him blue balls. I just mentioned that now, didn't I? By hunting by not having sex with him. Now now that scene of that woman that described that thing with Crystalia in the hotel room where she ran out of the room, down the doorway, down the stairs, out of the flipping hotel. Now that makes a lot more sense. It does make a lot more sense, doesn't it? Because for some guys, a no isn't enough. So legitimately screaming, pushing a person off, and then running like you're being chased by a lion might be the only way some guys can, can kind of process. Oh, she means no. Do you know what I mean? Some of them just can't accept it. They really can't accept it. It's absolutely crazy. Eventually, Charlotte says Callahan got the message. The two never spoke again, but she says the incident left her feeling violated, confused, and incredibly disrespected. Um, for the first five new, for the for the what for the next few years, Charlotte watched the degree of discomfort as Callahan platform, in which she travelled across the country in an RV, interviewing eccentric subculture figures. So a lot of these people from these accounts we're reading, right? A lot of these accusers. We're getting annoyed at Callahan's popularity or maybe how he was being described and kind of positioned as, right? He was being looked at as like as a social justice warrior type of person. He's for the people. He's representing the downtrodden. He's, you know, civil rights, social, whatever, whatever it may be, right? Um, and it really pissed them off. So they wanted to then obviously reveal to the world what he was actually like as a person, which some people could say is a bit vindictive, but I think it makes sense. Because I've said it many times, there's sort of issues. Unfortunately, when you engage in these creepy behaviors, you can't be in control of how that person reacts or responds or receives it because you got them involved, right? Once you get them involved in your nonsense, whether it's a joke, whether it's not, you kind of you kind of kind of let go of any sort of agency or any sort of right to secrecy or privacy because you got them involved in your creep shit so they're they're free and they're able and they're okay with holding it as long as they want and then dropping it like a grenade on your career just as you start to blow up it's you know what i mean it's sad of course for you professionally but it is what it is isn't it you shouldn't have done a creep shit what can you do um 
Over the years, Charlotte pri privately told people who shared Callahan's content on social media about the encounter, messaging one friend in 2019 that Callahan had tried to make do make me do sexual things that I didn't want to do. Another friend in 2020 that Callahan was really sexually inappropriate with me, according to screen gaps and screen recordings viewed by the Rolling Stone. So she's got evidence, proof, showing that she told people in 2019 about this incident prior to him being famous. So, you know, we have to say that probably, probably, to a high level certainty did happen. Charlotte's ex-boyfriend with whom she told about the encounter and Callahan tells Rolling Stone that Charlotte told him Callahan was kind of aggressive. Then while scrolling through TikTok, Charlotte saw another woman had posted a video recounting a similar story with Callahan. It went from giving this 19 year old goofy dude who doesn't understand consent the benefit of the doubt to, oh, this is a person who holds societal power and has a platform now, she says. Uh, I'm not really sure about the whole power thing. I think that's a misnomer. I think that can just be left by the side. That whole, like, he has power. I don't have power thing is a nonsense. I just think in general, it should be two consenting adults. If the person does not consent, they say no. You should stop and go home and have a wank. It's not that serious. Pushing somebody to this extent to do whatever you want to do is gross and sick in the nth degree, especially when you read it back. Because there's no win. In my, I don't know. In my opinion, there's never been a win in that way. It's like the same guys are trying to hook up with girls that are drunk. That's not a win in my book. It's not a win. It's not, it's not, it doesn't make you look cool or look good. If anything, it kind of just opens up the avenue that you might have some dark shit in your cupboard that you're also kind of hiding in that regard. Um, you should not, it's, it's like, it's like even the PUA stuff is the same sort of thing. When I was, when I was trying to get turned off by the PUA stuff, it started to turn into a lot of kind of weird mind control hypnosis stuff. It's like, that, that's what it shouldn't be. PUA stuff should always be at its core. What it kind of should start off with was like, giving regular guys the tools necessary for them to hold you know the attention or attract maybe girls that may be outside of their league by having good conversation by being able to kind of be mo and connect and whatnot but when it got into kind of weird negging and mind control and this stuff and all this sort of shit it get, it's got really creepy because like well, hold on are you okay with sleeping with somebody because you hypnotized them is that is that perfectly fine with you <laughs> i don't know man it just sounds weird it gets really really dark really really creepy and really really scary very quickly anyway it continues neither callahan nor his reps responded to repeated requests for comment of course they didn't <laughs> ah, but anyway he made a statement on tmz let's see what he said um andrew callahan's statement on tmz what did he say to refute or to clear up some of these egregious accounts that have been kind of labeled against him. Um, the title is Andrew Callan responds to sexual misconduct claims, says less victim asks for money. Oh yeah, the flipping yeah, that's what I got to post, isn't it? Right? The what's the thing called? Um, the blackmail stuff. So Andrew Callahan of August No Breaks host and star of HBO new documentary Displaced Rules responded to sexual misconduct allegations against him, claiming one of the victims asked him for serious dough before making accusation public. <sighs> okay that gets a bit touchy isn't it a legal rep for the journalist tmz said andrew is devastated that he's being accused of the type of physical and mental coercion against anybody conversations about pressure and consent are extremely important and andrew wants to have these conversations so he can continue what come on bruv this is like what dana white said isn't it like what should my punishment be if you're being accused of being an abuser you can't then have the conversations about abuse you just need to sit down sit down like you know sit down on the sidelines for a bit relax and chill be thankful you're not in prison conversations to learn and grow <laughs> what do you need to learn and grow about no means no <laughs> you need a lesson on that you're 25 years old shit adding um while make so while every dynamic is open to interpretation the proper communication is critical from those involved repeat requests for money should not be part of these conversations now controversial opinion here just because somebody might have said some such shit after the fact and maybe ask you for money in a in the flipping pings of desperation, it doesn't invalidate their claims, in my opinion. Because if one let's say we remove that girl who did ask for money. Let's say we delete her because she invalidated herself because she asked for money. There's still five or six more you have to account for. That's the issue when it comes to this sort of stuff. So maybe she was lying. Okay. Maybe she asked for money. Maybe she's embellishing a story and she's adding too much salt bay salt to it. Cool. But what about the other five? There we go. 
Um, for those unaware, Andrew started again. Okay, cool, cool. A source with knowledge that tells us that Calorie requested money from Andrew, referencing the fat check he got from HBO. Okay, cool. I think I've got the screenshot somewhere here. Let me see if I can find it. I think I've got it loaded somewhere. Is it this? Yeah, there we go. Okay, so this is the this is the of the alleged blackmail, right? So this is a text to Andrew. I think I guess the girl sent. I don't really want a response from you because i already know i think she shared this herself didn't she because this is her text wow okay i don't really want any response from you because i already know you skewed version of what happened the last time i saw you i just want you to know that seeing oh, he got this message on the friday december the 30th his new year must have been so horrible right on one hand he's got this amazing documentary coming on hbo on another hand he knows he's got this tsunami an absolute avalanche of accusers coming after him where it's gonna render his career mute what a horrible new year <laughs> i already know your skewed version of happened last time i saw you i just want you to know that seeing friends of mine promote your show which i'm not discounting came with a lot of hard work hurts me in ways you could feel you in hurt hurts me in ways i wish you could feel sometimes anyways if hbo cuts you a fat check and you in any way feel like helping contributing to massive amounts of therapy bills i have occurred due to the night you coerce me and the resulting trauma my venmo oh come on lady that is really distasteful lacking in class in tact in everything because i don't know if somebody did that to you you should want nothing to do with them whatsoever. You should want to bury them under the jail. You should want to ruin everything about the reputation. You should want to share your story with everybody that will have you. You should be at every podcast, every TV channel, everything, right? Sharing everything that happened. But you should not be in any way, shape or form in communication with said abuser and trying to flipping blackmail them out of money. That's insane. If anything, you should be trying to get the money out of them through the cancellation, right? You should be getting out there, getting yourself verified on social media, having paid interviews, doing paid news pieces, um, maybe taking it to a civil court and getting money that way. But trying to get money from him directly is so bizarre so bizarre and unfortunately if you're a sensible person sensible principled person you have to say this does devalue um a, a tiny bit her account it doesn't you know diminish her all what happened because i'm sure it probably did happen given all the other people that have come out and said this stuff but come on man trying to extort somebody that abused you is so bizarre and maybe that this does happen i don't know maybe this is the standard thing that happens in abuse cases where some of the victims tried to go after people monetarily behind the scenes but i think this should be done in the courts you should be trying to civil suit civil sue this guy until his eyes go flipping blue fair enough but trying to get him to venmo you money awful but again he has only himself to blame right you get yourself involved in this nonsense because you try to coerce people into sex so it's it always again i'm a big believer in personal responsibility i'm a big believer in extreme ownership and the whole reason why this happened the whole reason why he's getting these text messages is because this girl said no and he still tried to fuck so it is what it is you know what i mean you have to face whatever you have to face but this girl doesn't come across the best when she's trying to extort the guy in my opinion but hey what do i know in this case what do i know 